Hi there everyone, today we're going to be talking biology. We've got some amazing pictures of plant life and we're going to blow your mind with these amazing pictures. And then at the end, we're going to show you something so boring, you could almost describe it as deadly boring. I'm Australian. <laughs> we'll get to that. Let's start with the good stuff. What have we got here? These are aloes, so plant artists would very often try to capture some of the most exotic plants that they could find. And these would be unusual, not known to science perhaps, or not common to science. And George Ered, who produced these rather wonderful paintings, produced them for the Royal Society. He's probably the finest botanical artist of the 18th century. These ones were painted in about 1735-1736 and they are from Chelsea Physic Garden. Chelsea Physic Garden is established by Sir Hans Sloane. Sloane is a president of the Royal Society. He's established the British Museum. As a tithe to the Royal Society, Chelsea Physic Garden had to send 50 plant specimens annually to the society. So that was sort of in his will. You can have the garden, but only if you send the Royal Society these plants. That's right. And in time, they started to send not the plants themselves, but paintings of the plants. So there we go. That's the story behind these. They're beautiful. I mean, they are rather lovely things. They're produced in the most magnificent style and signed very proudly, George Dionysius Eret. Dionysius. Good name. We've got even more amazing drawings in a book here. Let's go and have a look at this one, Keith. What do you got here? Well, that's quite the introduction. Look at that. That's making a statement already. That's right. These illustrations are in book form, so the watercolours of people like Eret might well be engraved up to produce printed books. In this case, Elizabeth Blackwell has had her illustrations printed at Nuremberg. You can see an engraved image there. That's, that's a bit of a boring one. It's a bit of a boring one, yeah. but here we have the hand-coloured ones, and these are in, again, a very sumptuous style, each plate individually hand-coloured. Fantastic stuff. If you're a gentleman collector, you might commission your own. You might have a, a rather fabulous collection of plant drawings made by someone like Eret, painted on vellum, the highest quality material, to impress your, your friends and guests. From your own garden, so you'd say, I'm really happy with my garden, I'm going to get one of these Top Gun artists to come and do yeah. me a job. Or he might do exotic plants for you, so you try to have the best possible collection you can afford. This book smells like an old book, doesn't <laughs> it? This is a, I love how this book smells. It smells like proper old paper and musty. Good work. So you would expect that the artist and the scientist who got to Australia and saw some of the first plant specimens there would be uh, really quite excited about it, wouldn't you? All right, everyone, you're ready for some Australia bashing with Keith now. Here we, here, we, here we go. This book is very, very boring. But before we start knocking it, mm. it was written by Robert Brown. And he is a famous scientist, Brownie in Motion. You probably know it from your school days. So he's a big deal. But... According to Keith, this was not his finest moment. So let's have a look at what's in this book. I'm not even going to try to say that. So this is Prodromus Flori Novi Hollandii. The key thing here is that it's the flowers of New Holland, which is, of course, Australia. Australia. That's what Australia yeah. was called yeah. before it was Australia. So he's gone to Australia. What mission is he on here? What, well, what he's, voyage? He's with Matthew Flinders aboard the Investigator, a very famous voyage and a very important one, scientifically very important indeed. This is the book he produced afterwards. Now, unlike this one with all the pretty pictures, I think Brown, he's more of a wordsmith. Yeah, what he's done is, is listed the plants that he found and they described, but yes, very much in prose. But come on, he couldn't manage a picture. Uh, in fact, the book was produced relatively poorly. I mean, for such an important work, only 250 copies printed, we think. He recalled a lot of them. There's no index. It's on horrible paper. And, you know, you just think he should have done a bit better. I would read you a little bit, but it's in Latin, unfortunately. Yeah, that as well. We said it was deadly boring, and this is where this book gets a little bit interesting, this particular copy of the book. It does pick up a bit, yes, that's right. Actually, there's all sorts of letters and bits of paper and things that have been stuck in by people who've owned it. There's a letter of Robert Brown there, so an original document by him. There's a bit of the history of the book in there as well. It tells you a little bit, I and mean, cl clearly the owner thought it needed a bit of a lift. 
So here we go. Here's a letter written by Brown himself. And I mean, he's such a famous person. I mean, that letter must be of some value in itself, a special thing to have. Yeah, it is, yes. And I think from a famous place, Soho Square. So he's written this from the residence of Sir Joseph Banks. Okay, March 21, 1820. But I promised you it would be deadly boring. Here we go. Let's have a look here. Robert Brown Esquire, DCL, Fellow of the Royal Society, Keeper of the Botanical Collections in the British Museum, Foreign Associate of the Academy of Sciences of the Institute of France, and formerly President of the Linnaean Society, died 10th of June, 1858, in his 85th year. This is Robert Brown's coffin plate. So when he was buried, he would have had a brass plate attached to the coffin with this legend on it and someone has taken the trouble to probably take a little brass rubbing of it and then use that to copy this which they inserted into the book. He's buried in London where he died. Presumably this plate is under the ground somewhere in, That's good, absolutely right, in yeah. goodness knows what state but there is a copy of it that someone has thought to made and stuck it in the front of not his finest piece of work mm -hmm. but a piece of his work nonetheless. Yeah. There you go, I told you. Deadly boring. <laughs> So we've had a bit of, bit of photoshopping, a bit of CGI. A bit of watercolour. A bit of watercolour. Well, that was the photoshop of the day. Indeed. Henry James has done this. Yeah, so he's taken his original photograph, which is posed, and then he's put watercolour over the top so that you get a nice maritime scene there. So this is the young lad floating off after he's been thrown off the Rhone, and off he goes to, to the island to be rescued.